I started working on the CCA program in Marin in 2007, so it's been a while for me. Um, and it's great to have a sister agency up in Sonoma. We're really looking forward to additional CCA programs starting throughout California. And today I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Marin Clean Energy and what we've done since we started offering service to our customers. So our agency was formed in 2008 after about six years of extensive study uh, and work to, to get that going. And so, like Jeff said earlier, I think that the amount of time it takes to create a joint powers agency for a CCA program and actually launching the agency is going to just continue to decrease, which is really good for everyone here. Uh, after we started our program, I'm sorry, after we created our agency in 2008, we offered service to Marin County customers in May of 2010. So we've been serving customers for just over four years. Um, initially, we were only serving customers in the county of Marin, but last year the city of Richmond decided to join our agency, and we offered service to those customers as well. So today we're serving about 125,000 customers throughout the county of Marin and the city of Richmond, and they represent about 77% of the customer base. That means that the other 23% of customers in our service area have decided to opt out and stay with pg and &E. uh, we recently added two new communities to our, uh, to our organization, and that's the county of Napa and the city of San Pablo. The city of San Pablo is sandwiched right inside the city of Richmond, uh, and we're going to start serving unincorporated customers in Napa and San Pablo customers next year. So we're also continuing to grow. Since we started service in 2010, we've reduced 131 million pounds of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it is the mission of our agency to reduce energy-related greenhouse gas emissions, so it's something that we're really proud of. We're also offering lower rates for our customers this year. We're expecting to save our customers about $5.9 million. So that's spread throughout all of our customers. Uh, the customers who are really benefiting from that and seeing pretty significant savings are our schools, our uh, water districts, our local counties, cities, and towns, the ones who are using more electricity. One thing to think about with rates is that any comparison with rates is going to change at any given point in time. We change our rates only once a year, so we offer a lot of stability. pg &E, on the other hand, changes their generation rates about three to five times a year. So anytime you know, they change their rates, this cost comparison is going to change. Customers in our service area have four different choices. So they have a lot of opportunities to decide what kind of power they want to buy for their home or their business. Of course, they can always have PG&E. PG&E is offering 22% renewable right now. They can have our light green product, which is 50% renewable. Light green is what our customers are automatically enrolled into if they don't decide to opt out or opt up to one of our greener programs. I think it's worth noting that when we started service in 2010, our light green product was only 25% renewable energy. So over the last four years, we've been able to double the amount of renewable energy in that and also keep our rates really competitive and right now lower than pg &E. We also have something called Deep Green. That's 100% renewable energy. It costs a little bit more than our light green product. It's a penny more per kilowatt hour, which ends up being about $4 more per month uh, than pg &E for our residential customers. And we recently announced something called Soul Shares that will be available to our customers in January of 2015. And it is 100% new local solar. So we are working on building uh, local solar and other renewables in our service area that I'll tell you a little bit more about in a couple of slides. But this option will be for customers who want all of their electricity to be sourced from a local project. It's our most expensive project because it's brand new. We're building it just for these customers and it's in our service area. This is a map that shows uh, where our power sources are coming from between 2010 and 2013. We've got a pretty diverse uh, portfolio for our power. We have wind, uh, we've got geothermal at the Calpine geysers as well. Uh, we've got solar, biomass, biogas, and we've also got large and small hydroelectric. So this map shows that most of our power is coming from California, but we also buy cal power from out of state in Oregon and Washington. We've got contracts with 12 different energy suppliers for about 17 different projects right now. And we've also got a lot of new power being built for our customers 
in California, 54 megawatts. Uh, it's mostly solar with a little bit of biogas. It's enough power uh, for 23,000 homes per year. One of the, I think one of the best things about CCA programs, and Jeff was alluding to this as well, is the fact that you have the local control. So as a not-for-profit government agency without shareholder profits or dividends that you have to pay into, we can reinvest uh, a part of our revenue into local projects and programs. And that is a huge opportunity for anyone who has a CCA program. It's really you know, a great point where you can determine what your community wants are, what your needs are, and reinvest um, to make those things happen. So I wanted to go over some of the things that we're doing in our service area. Um, since before day one, it's always been really important for our customers for us to build uh, local renewable power. So I'm really excited because uh, a couple of years ago, the largest solar project was built in Marin County at a private airport uh, for our customers. It's just under a megawatt in size. And we've got nine other uh, local renewable projects. So within the county of Marin or the city of Richmond in our service area that are going to be built for our customers. Um, it is a mix of solar and a little bit of biogas at a local landfill. Um, I mentioned deep green earlier and how it's a penny per kilowatt hour more. One of the things that's a value for deep green is that half of that extra penny that you pay for deep green is reinvested into a local renewable development fund. So if you choose deep green, you're directly supporting the development of local renewables in your service area. We've also invested in a variety of local programs uh, for Marin and the city of Richmond. We've provided funding for the installation of electric vehicle charging stations. We're partnering with Tesla right now to offer a battery storage program to large commercial customers in our service area. Uh, we are thinking that the first uh, customer for this program is going to be the College of Marin. Um, we're really excited about offering that to our commercial customers. We also partnered with a group called Bidgley, and we gave free home area network, um, networks to customers in our service area. They are residential customers, and they're pretty nifty. They connect to your PG&E bill and your smartphone, and they basically assess what all of the different utilities in your home are using each month. So it'll say, hey, you spent this much on your washer and dryer or this much on your dishwasher. And the point of it is basically to encourage behavior change so that people are using less electricity, which is good for us, and then saving money on their energy bills, which is good for them. We also fund our local green business program. So uh, it's space for the, in the county of Marin. Another program that we're offering, and Jeff was mentioning, is an opportunity is energy efficiency. So um, this is a little bit different than the other programs because it's funded through something that all customers pay on the PG&E side of their bill. It's the public purpose charge. And right now we are, are offering this pretty extensive program. It's available to everyone in our service area, whether or not they decided to choose Marine Clean Energy or opt out and stay with PG&E. Um, this is an addition to the energy efficiency programs that are offered by PG&E. So uh, what we offer our customers are no-cost energy assessments for their buildings, which are valued at $3,000 to $5,000 for our commercial and multifamily buildings. We help them identify uh, what the best projects are for energy and water-saving opportunities. We also provide cash rebates to them, averaging 25 to 60% of the project cost. Rebates are tied to the amount of electricity or water that they're actually saving. Um, we provide no-cost uh, no direct installations for our multi-family buildings. So uh, we'll actually pay the landlord of a, of a building $25 per unit if they let us go in and replace their light bulbs with CFLs, low-flow um, shower heads, and water faucet aerators. And we give our, our customers um, an opportunity to use a financing mechanism if they want to implement any of the larger energy efficiency uh, upgrades. And it's uh, an on-bill repayment program. So our customers can take out a loan through a local bank that we've partnered with, uh, First Community Bank in Marin. And they can use that loan to pay for the upfront cost of the energy efficiency upgrade and pay it back directly on their PG&E bill. So it's a monthly fee. So it creates a direct tie between the savings associated with the energy upgrade and the cost um, of, that, of that project. 
one thing that has been coming up a lot lately is about jobs and how do CCA programs affect jobs? First of all, I want to say that no one's going to lose any jobs because of CCA programs, which is a great thing. Uh, we actually are creating and supporting jobs. So we've created more than 1,300 California jobs in the last three years. We have, uh, those are related to our power supply contract. So all this new power is being built for our customer and customers and people have to build and maintain those. So that creates jobs. We have 20 employees at our office. We're pretty, pretty lean agency, in my opinion, but we've grown dramatically over the last four years. We also have service vendors for um, a variety of things, 54 service vendors, 34 of them are local. And then we've created a lot of energy efficiency jobs um, through local organizations to support the program that I was just telling you about. Um, so I'm going to be here through lunch. I won't be here through the second part of the afternoon, but if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. As noted on here, I'm the communications director, so really um, my forte is in uh, customer service, marketing, branding, explaining your program to the public, and I have a one-pager that I wanted to hand out to you guys that sort of goes over the, the key points of telling your story and how important it is uh, to do marketing and branding. I think it's one thing that's really different for these types of organizations to get into because local governments don't usually have to compete for services. They're not really in the, the commercial marketing industry and it's a, a new and interesting field to explore. So thanks so much for having me.